historic moment. Nigeria become the first African nation to claim gold in the men's football. They beat Argentina by three goals to two, and Nigeria are Olympic champions. On the edge of the Gulf of Guinea, where the black gold wells are being dug, footballs are in circulation and talents are being forged. Nigeria is a land of football. Winner of the African Games in 1973, then the African Cup of Nations in 1980, the Nigerian national team has made its mark on the continent. But those nicknamed the Green Eagles dreamt of a World Cup, a tournament that kept eluding them throughout the 1980s. The death of Samuel Okwaraji on the pitch during a World Cup qualifying match was a tragic symbol of this fate. But drama precedes hope. Nwankwo Kanu, Daniel Amakachi, and JJ Okacha, names synonymous with glory for the Nigerian people. How did the Green Eagles become the Super Eagles in the 1990s? But before you discover Nigeria's golden generation, subscribe to Megafoot, the best of football on video. 1989. The starting point of the Nigerian Revolution. The Dutchman, Clemens Westenhoff, took over the Green Eagles. Arrogant and self-confident, Mr. Westerhoff is an outstanding character, an atypical personality ready to make strong choices. As soon as he arrived, he dropped some of the team's key players who were nevertheless playing in Europe, a supposed guarantee of quality. He nevertheless made an exception for Rashidi Yakini, the star player of Nigeria, a striker of 1m90, a fearsome striker, a real tank that could send a shot into the goal. At the time, Yakini was struggling with his national team despite his performances with his club, Vitoria Setable. During his four seasons in Portugal, Yakini scored 90 goals in 114 games. A machine. To accompany his asset and make his group more malleable, Clemens Westerhoff decided to surround him with young talent. After failing to qualify for the 1990 World Cup in Italy, the Green Eagles finally managed to qualify for a World Cup three years later. Before leaving the United States, Westerhoff's team won the African Cup of Nations in Tunisia. Yakini finished as the tournament's top scorer, scoring five of his team's seven goals. Striker Emmanuel Amunaiki rounded off the scoring with a brace in the final against Zambia. The confidence is there. The Green Eagles are going to be great. Zaravekos is Greece, Stoichkov's Bulgaria, and Maradona's Argentina. The Green Eagles' opponents at this World Cup are tough but not invincible. At the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, the Nigerians were ruthless against Bulgaria in the opening match. 3-0. It was a clean sweep, or almost. Yakini, the first scorer of the match, gave the American public a mythical, raging celebration. Alone in Mihailov's goal, none of his teammates joined in the celebration. Sunday Olisa, his partner, blamed the jealousy of his teammates towards Yekatini's talent and the lack of altruism of the striker, too sure of himself to put himself on the level of his companions. An invisible fracture in the Super Eagles locker room, which will hit Yakini hard. He would not score a single more goal in the competition. On the second day, Nigeria faced Argentina. The Albus Leste won 2-1 thanks to a double from Canigia. Although Diego Maradona dominated the match, El Pibi Dioro unknowingly played his last game for the national team. He tested positive for drugs after the match. Westerhoff's men went to Boston and beat the Greeks 2-0. Nigeria qualified. In the quarterfinals, the Super Eagles will face Italy. And they needed at least one golden ball to stop Nigeria's mad rush. Roberto Baggio, like Canigia, turned the game around with a brace, including a goal in extra time. The Super Eagles can leave this World Cup with their heads high. The African epic is over, but for the player Amakachi, this World Cup has changed football in Nigeria forever. The American adventure marks the end of the reign of Mr. Westerhoff, who was not extended by the Nigerian Federation. A surprising choice justified by the unhealthy atmosphere in the team's dressing room. Between Yakini, who stood up to his coach without the support of his partners once again, George Finiti and Emmanuel Amunaiki almost being sent home by the coach during the World Cup. Westerhoff, despite his achievements, was no longer the man for the job. As one Dutchman often hides another, it is Joe Bonfler who takes over the Super Eagles. It took a family name like this to solidify the ties between the Nigerian players. In 1996, as the first edition of the 16-team African Cup of Nations approached, politics, as so often in Africa, mixed with football. The assassination of the South African writer Ken Sarawiwa by the Nigerian general Sani Abachi triggered tensions between South Africa, the host country of the Can, 
and Nigeria. Nelson Mandela and the international community took up the cause. South Africa goes so far as to impose an oil embargo on Nigeria. Sani Abaji lost his temper and decided to exclude Nigeria from the can itself. This decision had far-reaching consequences as Nigeria was barred from participating in the next edition of the tournament in Burkina Faso. To the great despair of Yakini, who dreamed of becoming the best scorer in the history of the competition, and to break the record held at the time by Laurent Poco of Ivory Coast in his 14 goals. On the other hand, if the continent has turned its back on the Super Eagles, the world welcomes them with open arms. It was on Uncle Sam soil that the Nigerians wrote the most beautiful page of their footballing history, 1996 at the Atlanta Olympic Games. The Super Eagles were without Yakini, as the competition was reserved for under 23 but with a certain Wakanwo Kanu, a young Ajax Amsterdam player and a future legend of African football. In the first match of the tournament, the Eagles faced Hungary. Kanu scored the only goal of the game. Okocha took over and helped Nigeria to a 2-0 win over Japan. In the last match of the group stage, John Befre's men met R9. As always, they needed at least one golden ball to calm Nigeria's nerves. Despite the 1-0 defeat, the Super Eagles continue on to the quarter-finals. Nigeria eliminates Mexico through the fantastic Okocha and Baba Yairo. The semi-final had the flavor of revenge, a match of anthology against the Salacao. Brazil opened the scoring early before Roberto Carlos scored an own goal. But R9 and his band quickly buried Nigeria three goals to one at half-time. Ikpeba offered a glimmer of hope for the Super Eagles before Nwankwo Kanu played the hero. The young striker established in the dying moments of the game and then eliminated Brazil with a golden goal, 4-3. In the final, Nigeria met Crespo's Argentina. The Alba Celeste took the lead before Joe Bonfrey's men came back within one goal and then 2-2. Amanike gave his team the win in the last minute and the world gave the Super Eagles a new nickname, the Dream Team. A prestigious victory on the international scene, the first of the African continent on this scale. Nigeria has entered the history books. The 90s generation of Super Eagles paved the way for Nigerian football. Today, it is the second African nation with the most appearances at the World Cup, but also the one that has won the most games and scored the most goals. 26 joys for the Nigerian people. Nigeria wins, yes, but always in style. And for you, which is the best African team of all time? Thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, don't hesitate to talk about our channel around you, to like it and to share it. It helps us a lot to continue to create more content on football news. See you soon for a new video. Bye for now.